There are times when God says, buy from me. Revelation 3, 17 forward, for instance. You do not realise that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you can become rich. Or how about Isaiah 55, verse 1. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Notice that in each case, those being encouraged to buy have absolutely nothing to buy with. God is not encouraging his people to approach him with an attitude of take what you want at the price you want to pay. But these verses are a warning not to waste our lives chasing earthly treasures, but to bring our emptiness, poverty and nakedness to him to be filled, enriched and clothed. Now this is what was happening from the earliest days of the church. It created a community that was one in heart and mind, that shared everything that they had, that was the epicentre for powerful testimony about the Lordship of the risen Jesus. And that was full of grace, as its members generously and sacrificially gave in order to provide for the needs of those around them. That's the state of affairs summarised in Acts chapter 4 verses 31 to 37. And the reason for that state of affairs can be easily seen when you read and reflect on a passage like Philippians 2, 1 to 11. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ. Well, filled with his spirit, their attitude was the same as that of Christ. Enter Ananias and Sapphira. They are presumably baptised believers, genuine members of the church. They are, superficially at least, taking part in what is going on. The unity, the sharing, the testimony, the outpourings of grace. But they are coming at it from an entirely different angle. This couple are consumerists. They want more bang for their buck. They could do what Barnabas did and simply sell and give. They could also, as Peter points out, sell and keep or publicly give part of the money. Both land and money belonged to them. This church hadn't abolished possessions. They were just not interested in claiming them for their exclusive use. Now what they disastrously decide to do is to take what they want, which is all the praise and appreciation that Barnabas got for his generosity, while keeping for themselves some of the money. Best of both worlds, says the consumer. I knew there'd be a way. I can buy that new car and still be celebrated for my example of sacrificial giving. And for what actually happens, read Acts chapter 5. Insofar as this couple do re realise that they're doing something wrong, they would probably acknowledge that they are deceiving others, other believers. What they're actually attempting to do is to lie to God. Now, Peter asks them, what made you think of doing such a thing? Anyone who's part of the Western Church in 2021, is well placed to take a pretty good guess, wouldn't you say? How many examples can you think of from your own experience where great fear sees the whole church? Yeah, I couldn't think of any. Okay, now how many examples can you give of people tweaking and reshaping and bending God's will to suit their own purposes? Yeah, I can think of lots, and too many of them personal as well. What do we personally know more of? The fear of the Lord, or the ability to take what we want away from the church without paying over the odds for it? It's challenging, isn't it? What's the difference between Ananias and Sapphira, and the church, or the individual, that has everything carefully arranged around the taste of its own members, but still wants are the Christians to believe that it's all about God. How do we guard against this kind of consumerist mentality that has, I believe, corroded the affluent Western church? For all sorts of reasons now, people are very wary at the moment of sharing, of getting sucked in, of commitment. But if we don't share our lives with each other, how can there be unity in the church? How can a body function as we're meant to do as the body of Christ if its members don't genuinely belong to each other? They just try and use each other and avoid being used. 
what happens to the testimony about the Lordship of the risen Jesus when it's presented by such a church. How can we possibly grow in grace without giving our very selves away? Enough. If you have been, thank you.